Now, before we get started, I should mention that the metronome in Reaper has changed pretty dramatically in recent versions. So you want to make sure you're using Reaper 7.26 or newer to have the same functionality. So our project set up here, and it sounds like this. And I want to add a metronome or a quick track to it so I can record more parts and be in time with our song. So you can go up over here and hit this toolbar button to turn on the metronome. And now it sounds like this. Let's go back a bar so you can hear it come in earlier. So now we have a click track going with our project. But to adjust the settings in the metronome, we could right click this button. And that opens up this dialog. So let's go through this. Right up over here, we could turn on and off the metronome. Off or on, which is the same thing as hitting the toolbar button. And over here, we could choose where the metronome is sent. By default, it's going to the master outs, but we could change that to output one and two, three and four, or any other outputs you might have on your interface. Let's say you're using output three and four for headphones. You can send the metronome there, and we're not going to hear it in the control room. Hit play, and we don't hear it. Just the headphones are hearing it. Or we could change it or add more outputs here, or turn this off. And now it goes back to just the master outputs of our project. So now we're hearing it again. Over here, we choose when we hear the metronome. By default, it's on during playback and recording. If we don't want to hear it during playback, we can turn it off here, but still leave the metronome on. This way, we're only going to hear it while we record and not during playback, which makes a lot of sense for most workflows. So during playback, we're not going to hear it, but if I go into record, we do. So it's kind of helpful to adjust that right here without having to constantly turn the metronome on and off. But by default, both of these are on. Then over here, we get a count in before playback or recording. This is off by default, but if we turn it on, let's put the cursor at bar one, hit play. We get a count in before playback or before recording. But again, these are off by default, but turn these on if you want them. And we could choose how long that count off is right over here. It defaults to two bars, but we can make it one bar. And we just get one bar of count in. Let's put it back to two bars, just like the default. And over here, we could choose to have the count in start at the beginning of a measure. In this situation, there's no difference, but if we put our cursor over here and hit playback, the count in starts in the middle of the bar. So it could be confusing. So if we turn on this option, it's always going to count off starting at the top of the bar. And start playback where our cursor is. But again, this is all off by default. Then down over here, we can choose the pattern that's being played. Right now we're hearing the A sound, then the B sound three times. But we could change that by clicking in the matrix. So now it alternates between A and B each time. Or we could use more sounds, adding in C. Or even D. And we could type in this pattern down here if you prefer. Let's put it back to A, B, 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 and it's back to the default. 
We could also change our pattern over here to be two times or four times as fast. So if we want to double it, it'll sound like this. And we could do things like this. We'll put in these notes. To change the pattern we want. Or we can make it even faster, like this. Or any pattern we want. We'll put it back to one, click right here on the plus sign, and switch it back to the 4 4 default, which is this. We could also change it to be triplet 3 over 2. or triplet three over four. We can hear that better like this. It doesn't make much sense in this song, but obviously in other songs it would. But let's put it back to straight and reset the pattern to four four. We could also turn on Project Grid follows the metronome click pattern. Right now, my grid is based on bars, but we could change it right here. Now it's based on the metronome we chose, or the metronome part we chose. So the grid could adjust to a metronome right here, but this is off by default. Then over here, we could decide the volume of a metronome. This fader is for the whole thing, And this fader is for the relative gain of the other notes. Let's set it to A, B, C, and D. We can adjust this for the whole level. And this one relative to it. To make it easier, let's set this to be all A and get the level we like. And then set this one to B and adjust that here. So this volume is relative to this volume, but this is the overall level of the metronome. Then we can choose the metronome sounds we're hearing. By default, it's a sine wave, four milliseconds long, and these notes right here, or frequencies. We could change that to be a triangle, or a square wave, or a sine and square wave. Let's put it back to a sine wave and change the length. Now it sounds more like a beat. And we can change the frequency over here. Let's change it to 3200, 1600, 800, and 400. And that sounds like this. Let's change this to a square wave. Now we can use this instead. And if we want to save the changes we made, go right here, save preset, and give it a name. And now if we go down here and reset it to the default, it goes back to this. But we can go back to what we saved as a preset right here. But you'll notice if we change this pattern, it's not saved with this. So if we reset it, it doesn't reset this. If we go back to the preset, it doesn't change this. So what we do over here is not saved in the preset. The preset is just for over here. But it also saves any custom samples we bring in over here. So let's put this back to the default, and the default over here. And let's change the samples to some custom samples. Click this one, go to Browse. It goes to my hard drive. And now I can choose any sound I want 
to be my click track or metronome. So I'm going to choose a couple of clave sounds starting with this one. Double click it and do the same for B. Clave 2. So now it sounds like this. We could save this as a preset as well. Go down here, save preset, name it clave. And now if we put this back to the default, we can always go back to it by choosing it right here. But make sure you bring in these samples into your project folder so you don't lose them if you take your project to another studio. So we can switch back to the default or to the custom presets we created. So that's pretty much it. That's the metronome in Reaper. Hope you learned something. Hope you could use it and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go.